I like to craft with aluminum drink cans, and if you do too, I've got five fun Christmas decorations for you to try. Since I save a lot of aluminum beer and soda cans for my craft projects, I have my own system for breaking down the cans. There are a lot of different ways to do it, but I have done a video tutorial on the way that I break down cans into metal sheets, rings, domes, and tabs that I'll link to in the description. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use each one of these different parts to make a unique upcycled Christmas decoration. For the first project, I'm using the scrap pieces from the can ring. And since I do a lot of projects from the drink cans, I always have a really big stash of partially broken down cans. Now, normally I cut the scrap pieces off of the ring and I just keep the ring part, but these small pieces are perfect for this Christmas tree project. It does take quite a few of these pieces, even for this small tree that I'm making, and you don't have to just use the scrap pieces. You can cut small rectangles from the metal sheet pieces as well. To finish shaping each of the pieces, I'm using a pair of scissors just to round off one end. For the tree shape, I used an old cereal box to make my base, but you could use any scrap cardboard. You need a square corner and then something to draw the arc with to make the sides equal lengths. So I just used a piece of string and a marker, and then I taped all of my pieces to secure them before I drew the arc. And then once the shape was cut out, I applied some hot glue to make it into the cone shape. Now this cardboard is a little stiff and doesn't want to roll very easily, but with a little determination it can be shaped into a cone and you don't have to worry if the shape isn't perfectly smooth. The next step is to attach the metal pieces to the cone and I use metal tape for a lot of my aluminum projects. So I just cut strips of the aluminum tape and I started at the bottom of the cone and worked my way toward the top, covering the tape with the metal pieces as I went along. I started this project thinking that I could use all the different colors of scrap pieces, but once I got a couple of rows onto the cone, I decided it looked way too much like a party hat. So I did switch to only green pieces, and I had to cut up some of my aluminum sheets so that I would have enough green. To finish the Christmas tree, I cut another small cone from the aluminum sheet and I added a little crystal to the top with some E6000 glue to make my tree topper. Project number two is this giant chain garland made from the can rings. And this project does take a lot of rings to make a garland that's long enough to go around a tree or hang, really hang off of anything. So you'll want to make sure that you save a lot of cans if you decide to do this project. The first step is the same that we used in the previous project. To remove the excess metal from the ring, I'm just cutting some slits up to the ring about three quarters of an inch apart and then I'm just pushing the tabs back and forth until they break loose from the ring. I'm going to be using some metal tape again and I want to cut the tape long enough to go around the rings which is about seven inches long and then because this tape has paper backing it's really easy to mark and cut. So I'm going to cut the tape into long strips one quarter of an inch wide. For this project, there are two types of rings, and the first one I'm calling O-rings. To start the chain, you'll need two O-rings, and to make an O-ring, I need two soda can rings and one piece of the quarter-inch metal tape. You want to hold the ring so that the rough edges are facing each other and the finished smooth edges are on the outside. 
And then to attach the pieces, I like to peel back just a small section of the paper from the tape and work my way around the ring, removing the paper backing in sections rather than all at once. The second type of ring I'm calling a C ring, and to make the C ring, I'm taking another two can rings and cutting them using my tin snips. Again, you want to be sure that the rough edges are facing each other, and then you can loop the C ring through the two O rings. Then I like to use a small piece of tape to hook the ends back together, and then another seven inch piece of tape to hook the rings all the way around, just as we did with the O-ring. I do like to offset the seams in each of the rings to make the connections more stable, and it also helps to keep the ring in a more uniform shape. And that's all there is to it. You can continue making O-rings and assembling the chain with the C-rings until you reach the desired length. For the next project, I'm going to be making a, some Christmas tree ornaments from pull tabs. And I'm starting with a long strand of 32 gauge silver wire, which is a very fine wire. You can use heavier wire if you want to, but you want to use something that's very flexible and easy to work with. You'll also need 20 pull tabs and 20 silver pony beads for each ornament. And to start, I'm just stringing one pull tab on and then alternating with the pony bead and going back to the pull tab and I'm stringing it through the larger end that is attached to the drink can. And I like to make sure that all my pull tabs are facing the same direction but if you don't you can still finish the ornament it'll work just fine as long as you string on all 20 pull tabs and all 20 pony beads. Once you have everything strung on the wire, you want to twist it tight several times to lock the wire in place, and you want to make sure that you've pulled the wire so that you've got a nice tight loop. Then I'm cutting a second piece of wire about 12 inches long, and I want to string it through the opposite hole in the pull tab, and I'm going to work all the way around the shape until all the pull tabs have been threaded. Next, I want to pull the wire ends tight again and twist the ends to secure them. And this will pull the tabs into the center to shape the ornament. To finish the ornament, you can weave the excess wire through the shape to tie off the ends. And you can experiment with coiling the wire and gluing it in place to finish off the ends. And also you can try using different beads. For this next project, we're going to be making another type of ornament, but we're using a different part of the can. For each of these ornaments, you need two can bottoms. And to prepare the pieces, I'm using my tin snips again to trim off the excess metal so that only the domed portion is left. I also want to cut a short piece of crochet thread and tie it in a loop so that I can use that to hang my ornament. And I need another piece of metal tape, a quarter inch wide and about six or seven inches long, just enough to go all the way around the piece. To assemble the ornament, I start by taping one of the tails from the crochet thread loop to the metal tape. 
And then as I'm holding the two can pieces together, I wrap the tape around, making sure to cover the seam and catch both sides of the aluminum pieces. And once I get around the piece, I wanna make sure that I'm catching the other tail of the crochet thread loop in the tape as well. Then I wanna smooth it with my fingers and to finish it, I'm using the side of my embossing tool to burnish the tape onto the aluminum. The last step is to decorate the ornament. And for this project, I'm using some Mod Podge and tissue paper, but you can also use paint, alcohol inks, sequins, glitter, and more to decorate these ornaments. So use your imagination and hopefully something from your craft stash. And then once your embellishments are secure and dry, the final step is to add a silver pony bead to the top and secure it with a little bit of E6000 glue. The final project is a small gift box. And to start this project, I'm using my ruler just to draw out the pieces on my scrap cardboard. My box is going to be three inches square, but you can also make smaller boxes and you can use any box template to create your own box. Just keep in mind that the maximum width of the aluminum is about three inches. So once I had the cardboard pieces all cut out, I'm going ahead and I'm just using a regular knife to score my fold lines. Next, I'm cutting out my flattened aluminum sheets into six three inch squares. If you make a different shape of box, you'll just wanna make your aluminum pieces to match all the sides and top and bottom of your box. And if you need some tips on how to flatten the aluminum, I have a video on three different methods for doing that, which I will link in the description. I'm using hot glue to attach the aluminum to the cardboard because it's just the fastest way to assemble this box. And I like to press the pieces with a medium hot iron to smooth out the glue a little bit. If you do this, you'll want to protect your iron with a piece of parchment paper to keep it from getting any excess glue on it. And you want to be sure just to lift the iron straight up and down and not move it around so that you're not moving the pieces. Once the glue has cooled down, the box can be folded and glued together with the hot glue. To finish the box, I'm using 5 8 inch strips of metal tape to cover the edges and corners and seams. And I used a wider pieces of the metal tape to cover the top tab pieces. Let me know which one was your favorite project in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, I'd love to have you click the subscribe button and join my YouTube family. Also, be sure to check the description for all the additional resources and for a way to sign up to receive the Upcycled Design Lab newsletter. You can check out more Upcycled projects from the Upcycled Design Lab in the links below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment.